Hey guys, Nerd King here, and I'm joined by... Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Mr. Ninja Star, and I'm happy to be making my return on Nerd King's channel. I think I was on your channel, like, a few times when you were still called, like, One Piece Nation, Yonko Sage, all that. But, yep. Yeah, what's the topic for today? For today, we are going to be debating uh, whether or not we Whole King Island is a good or a bad arc, basically, because you enjoy the arc, as from my understanding. And I think it's the worst arc in all of One Piece. In the canon, obviously. <laughs> yeah, we're not including, like, one of those Toei crappy fillers and stuff. Yeah. But uh, you want to go first with some of your points? Yeah, my first point was that I think this arc is the ultimate come together of everything I hate about Oda writing, which is mainly that it drags. The arc starts off really strong, and I think until the seducing woods, it's some of the best stuff post time skip. But then there's like a five six chapter period where it just drags for like six weeks. And then there's another point after the wedding there's the wedding. Where after the wedding it just drags for like ten chapters before Luffy versus Kata Curry. I also feel it had just some of the I there's too many characters and because of that the character writing is just incredibly weak. Uh, is that all your points? Yeah, those are my main points. Yeah, for the first half. So regarding, I, I guess I'm not mainly going to go into counter each one for all of my major ones, but I think just giving off what I love about the arc, well, first of all, I want to exclaim that it's not my favorite One Piece arc. It's a pretty flawed arc. I mean, even if you look at it from a merger spec, because I, I caught up to One Piece pretty recently. Like I caught up, I actually caught up around this arc, so I caught up right around 878, which is around, like, after Pedro's death, so I basically binged through the entire, like, first two-thirds of this arc, so it definitely did give me a better experience, and overall, I gotta say, this arc handled, um, really did feel kind of like classic One Piece, especially in the beginning, with this, with this wonderful world that was built, written so well, I felt Oda just threw in inspirations from Alice in Wonderland, from a bunch of classic Disney movies in general, I thought it... I thought it really s fit the mood for the beginning, but as we get more invested, we begin to see the terror of Big Mom and the depressing backstory that Sanji went through. And that Sanji-Luffy fight that we see is legit one of the most heart-wrenching moments in the entire series. So Oda definitely built some stuff for Sanji that we hadn't really gotten since the time skip, and I felt that was well-deserved. Also, going into it, I felt... <clears throat> It's going to be a hot take, obviously, but I felt the characters that we saw centrally in Whole Cake Island were much better um, handled than they were in Dressrosa, like that whole group, you know, Luffy, Zoro, Rob, all of them. All of them in Dressrosa, I mean, it worked, but people really... I, I felt Whole Cake Island did a better job giving solely individual moments to these characters. Like, Brooke had his whole moment against Big Mom, which is fantastic. Um, well, Chopper didn't too, do too much, to be quite fair, but you saw Nami. She, even at the end of this arc, she gains this extremely powerful power-up. Um, Luffy, <laughs> we find out recently that he's attained this Yonko status. We, like Sanji, he basically, we learn, it, with Sanji, it's not as, I guess... Um, noteworthy as Zoro's, but I felt for him moving forward as a character and for us to gain more insight, I thought it was re a really good move for us to see his second backstory and really establish his relationship with Luffy furthermore and kind of built it the same way. Because after the Usopp incident, I felt Luffy and Usopp did kind of become maybe a bit more close. Um, at least it just seemed to me. Um, after you get back from an argument, you, you kind of make up and all that. And I felt that worked. So it's these character dynamics that work really well in Whole Cake Island that made me love it so much. I know I've kind of rambled on, but that's like my my first major point. Yeah, and just to quickly counter that, I actually agree with a lot of what you said. And I feel like those are some of the strongest points of the arc. But I feel that the problem is that to a lot of the things you talked about, to get there, there's a lot of just useless padding in between and I feel like the major problem with padding is that there are so many characters introduced during the padding with no payoff the best example I can think of being Smoothie. Smoothie introduces the Squeak Commander and unlike all the other arcs in One Piece we kind of just have to hope it will pay off later the rest of the arcs in the series are very self-contained but we're kind of just being told yeah we're gonna come back Smoothie will do something eventually <laughs> I, I can get that argument. With the whole characters being introduced, I felt... 
Because obviously, obviously, it was even stated from the beginning, this isn't where Luffy's going to take down Big Mom. This is mainly that exposure to Yonko territory to boost up Luffy's status. And we see that in the news chapter, and that's one reason I think many people love it. It's because to many, Whole Cake Island seemed like such a pointless arc. And I mean, I wouldn't call it pointless, but not as important as the other central ones. I guess uh, that's what it seemed to me, at least when the arc finished. But when we got this Reverie chapter, we see that it really comes full circle with the amount of damage that Luffy took on Big Mom's forces and really boosts up his influence on other pirates in the world and all that. So I felt for that sense, Whole Cake Island definitely worked. And for us to really, because I feel maybe going in depth to each of the Yonko crews was a smart move. And obviously Big Mom just so happens to be the first one that we're introduced to. Obviously we're going to see way more of Kaido's in Wano. But I feel maybe when Big Mom does get defeated and let's say El Elbaf, it would make more sense for us to gain the full insight rather than her maybe making her debut in Elbaf and her end in Elbaf. When we really get to see the full extent of her crew, really see what these guys are like, i.e. the Yonk exposure to Yonko territory, it can really elevate the scale of what's going on, if that makes sense. And, and I feel that works. If if we hadn't seen like all these introductions to these characters and all that, um, we wouldn't really have an idea what the big moms are like. We wouldn't have an idea what their strengths were. We wouldn't know as much about their weaknesses. So when we do get to Elbaf, we already have all this prior knowledge, and that's what's going to make the, those moments against Big Mom all the more satisfying when you know she gets defeated or whatever. Um, yeah, that's basically respond to your point. You know, I have to agree with that. I feel like the problem is that that relies on another arc making this arc better. So it, it kind of, that kind of retroactive, that kind of like saying, uh, this arc will retroactively be better in the future. Because it's almost like 60 something chapters of setup. It kind of, what, what I think most people have agreed upon, we're setting up for the next real Big Mom arc. And I feel like that's all well and good, but as a self contained story, as a self contained story, I feel like this is one of the weakest arcs in One Piece, and I feel like one of the things that I think people like about One Piece is that you can pretty much jump in to any arc. Like, you could give somebody Dressrosa, and you they could just read that, and it would tell them a story. And they all have self-contained story arcs, and I feel like this is the first arc that kind of just feels like, yeah, this doesn't really tell an actual story. Regarding that, it definitely has a lot of that setup, and I'm not I'm not going to be one of those people that brings up like old examples and maybe call you a hypocrite because you like this arc, but then this one wasn't. No, I'm not going to do that. I guess just going off, you know, your reasoning for a still self-contained arc. I feel what it does. I mean, it it works uh, to put it simple. Like I heavily disagree with that point you made about you. Any fan can just jump into any One Piece arc. I know that like. So much is built up, so I, I don't see too much of a difference um, for Whole Cake for it to be um, have all this have all this prior knowledge that we need to know, and yet also kind of build up stuff future in the story. Um, I know I mentioned I wasn't going to bring up any previous examples, but I think Skypea um, did it did this fairly well, where it it was still a fairly contained story that one might see drifts a bit too much from the main objective at hand. But even so, it's also set up things for the long run. So skipping it, I don't think that's a that's a really good. Uh, like, I, I see many people say you can just skip Skypea. I disagree with that. So I feel Whole Cake Island, I mean, as a self-contained, it definitely would be better in the long run or maybe when you're binging. Because I binged all of the, the first two thirds and I loved it. Um, so if you're talking about like week to week, then yeah, definitely it is flawed because you're seeing it dragged on and on and on. But this is also coming from someone who... Because all One Piece arcs are really meant to be binge, if you think about it. Like... Water 790's Lobby is a fantastic, or fantastic collection of arcs, but if you read them week to week, like, I think Water 7 was 39 episodes, Andy's Lobby was, like, 45. So, just imagine watching that week to week, and Andy's Lobby, it does have its slow points, uh, you know, where it's not focused on, let's say, Luffy or Lucci or any of the major fights. There are, there's going to be some padding, that's not even including the filler bits, so, yeah, I I'm curious what people were thought of back then, because they, they may have thought it was negatively as Whole Cake Island, um... I don't know, though. I, I think this is definitely... We're probably going to gain a greater appreciation for it as the years go along. You know, I have to agree with that. I feel like Whole Cake Island is an arc that will retroactively be better because it's setting up a lot of things. My, my personal biggest gripe with the arc, really, is just that I feel there's a lot of areas that are kind of 
poorly written. I feel like the pudding plot line, like, I feel like the whole thing with pudding was really hammered in a little too much. I think, like, Luffy versus Katakuri. There were a couple times where it kind of felt like, towards the end, like, Odo was rushing it a little bit, and I'm not really sure why he would do that. Um, what do you mean by rushing it? Because I think I think you even stated this, like, the ending did feel quite dragged, so what do you mean by rush? Like, do you mean that the ending was, like, abrupt, or...? I mean, I mean kind of, like, like, the narrative kind of just stopped. Like, you know, Luffy beat Cop the Curry, he escaped. Like, two chapters later, they were on the ship, the fifth man pirates show up and they leave. Like, he gets a ton of the fights, he gets a lot of stuff. After the Kata Curry fight, a lot of stuff got skipped. Yeah, no, I mean, that was the main folk, uh, vocal point of the arc, the main, um, the big climax, so to speak. It's funny, you, you it, it kind of reminds me of um, of Annie's Lobby. Like, it wasn't, like, Lucci wasn't exactly the main villain, but he was the main obstacle for Luffy to face. And, I mean, the stuff after, it's all a matter of the post stuff. Like, One Piece is never, like, Dress Rosa didn't end exactly with the Doflamingo fight. There was always this stuff afterwards where you have to get past it and all that and to kind of keep moving forward so i, I didn't have too much of a problem with it i can kind of see why it might um bother you i mean it did like it did feel kind of out of place with the german maybe showing up for one chapter and then doing absolutely nothing i i, I do kind of agree that the german were um somewhat wasted but everything else i thought i thought it was fine it didn't seem like too much of an issue the main meat of the arc was already done and over with now it's just a matter of kind of wrapping it up nicely and i felt um, Nine Two did a solid job with it. Um, it was bittersweet, so to speak, with every. Go ahead. I I think the biggest, real I feel like the biggest thing to take away from this arc is that this arc Oda heavily focused on the on the themes of blood and relationships between family members, and that was really what he wanted to focus on. And I think he did a great job with that. I will give this arc that. I just feel there are a ton of points in this arc. There are a lot. There are a lot more lows in this arc than you would see in your standard One Piece arc, and I think that's really where my problem comes from. Yeah, it's definitely like a mild arc, so to speak. Like you can get your really, really good highs, but you can also get your really low lows. Um, it's a matter of how those lows like really get to you or not. I mean. Well, obviously, I obviously the lows stick out more to you because you know you you were reading a week to week, and I imagine the torture that must have been. Um, but as far as I don't want to keep reiterating the long run thing, but I guess I'm gonna say that again. It just it didn't seem those issues don't seem as jarring. I mean, they're they're definitely valid points, but it's just a matter of when you're seeing it like overall they those issues aren't too major i mean i can kind of agree that certain characters weren't really executed the way we wanted and i mean even even as someone who benched it the whole running thing did not need to be as long as it did um but i mean overall i just i i feel that a lot of the issues like it was a shifting arc i i can kind of agree on the inconsistencies uh criticism that many people have brought up but i think the shift works for each portion and it flows together nicely in my opinion you know, I actually agree. To the, I actually agree with what you, with what, everything you just said. I feel the, pr- I feel the issue with the, with the running is that if you're not binging it, it's incredibly hard to get through. And I, I think as you said, you binge it and you and you and you didn't, you didn't think it needed to be there, but you didn't mind yeah. it very much. I feel like that was kind of the problem with it that. This arc is ten times more enjoyable if you binge it. You you can say that about any One Piece arc though, if you really think about it. Like, like there there's several arcs that I mean are good, but I just imagine maybe reading or watching them weekly just probably isn't that great. Like I like I love Skypea, but if I were to read or watch that weekly, I would probably hate it, bro. Like, you don't know where the story's going to go, and you don't even know if everything's anything's even going to mean anything. But then once everything comes back full circle, you begin to g- gain a greater appreciation. Like, I mean, even when I binged Skypea and I, uh, I finished it for the first time, I wasn't exactly, like, too satisfied. I was like, all right, it's whatever. But then as I saw the story go along and I saw how much it really meant and the themes of establishing and all that and the amount of world building that it was, you know, 
showing to us, I grew greater appreciation for it. I feel many new One Piece fans will probably adore Whole Cake Island a lot more, and people's opinions may shift. Like, I mean, I'm not saying everyone's going to like it as much, because I know there's several people who, even after Dressrosa is over for a while, they still dislike it. But I, I feel people's opinions may shift as the years go along. I guess a major point I keep bringing up. And, I mean, yeah, you can say your next point. No, no, I, I agree with that. I think opinion will change as the arc had been out longer and people have watched it. But I feel like I would probably enjoy Hulk Island a lot more if I watched it or read it in, like, the time span of a month. The you know, Hulk Island, I feel like a lot of the issues come from, a cliffhang come from, like, cliffhangers and how drag it is. And I feel like when you put that all together into binging it, I don't think it's as big of a problem. I think it more go back to the fact that Oda's style of writing doesn't really do weekly serialization as well as we would all like it to. I think that's the way, that's the real problem. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I can agree with that being like, the one of the first few points you brought up was this arc brought out a lot of Oda's issues. And I, I, I can agree. Uh, one of his big issues is the inability to write that well week to week. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's pretty nice. Like, I loved uh, 895 Weekly, you know, like reading uh, the, the climax of Luffy Katakuri, reading that stuff week to week. That was cool. Um, Like 893 to 895. And also reading this newest chapter uh, we, I mean, it works for moments like that, like those big moments. But when it comes to the exposition, that's where it really starts to decline. And, I mean, all arcs in One Piece have their fair share of exposition. It's just a matter of did it get to you or not, or was it too jarring? Like, Sky P's exposition, when I saw it for the first time, I, I didn't, or when, when I was experiencing it, I didn't like it. But in the long run, I'm like, yeah, it's fine. They explored the world. They had fun with it. And if anything, I kind of missed those times where they were out adventuring and all that. So I did like that Whole Cake Island kind of had this more creative um world to it that i felt a lot of the post time skip arcs hadn't really been able to replicate like fisherman island was cool um it didn't stick out too much to me punk hazard i mean that's simple i guess it were equal cool. like the overall concept of it was nice like aokiji and akainu fighting but as in terms of what they did on the island and all that it didn't seem too impressive i did like that dress rosa was based off spain and i thought that was a cool idea at first um and i I liked uh, Zo being just kind of this whole furry kingdom, so to speak. But when it came down to Whole Cake Island, it had this fun Disney and also dark vibe to it that I just, it worked so well for me. And that kind of goes with the whole shift um, in tone that I think fits the arc. Well, I, ironically, uh, Whole Cake Island, it, as an island, is one of my favorite islands. I love Totland. I think it's an amazing concept. The, but honestly... I just think that the I think we can both agree. I think the best way to end this is to just say that the problem with this arc is that it's a lot better binged. But if you're watching it or reading it on a week to week basis, it just kind of becomes a okay. This arc is a thing that exists. Like you're just kind of reading it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nah. I mean, I'm I'm sure. Like, to be fair. If we hadn't gotten the news chapter, uh, 903, and let's say nothing really happened, then I would, don't get me wrong, I would dislike this arc a lot more. Because the thing is, which is why I had such an open mind about it, I'm like, there's going to be some level of payoff. And there was. Um, it had, if anything, it had a ton of payoff regarding, you know, Luffy attaining this large status, being more recognized than even before. Um, yeah, I felt that was a bold move from Oda, but it really ties back everything together. And that's the thing about One Piece. Like, uh, when you're seeing it, like, kind of in pieces, uh, pun not intended, it doesn't seem as good. But when you see it, like, all, all as one, um, it can, kind of flowing together, if that makes sense. Like, all, uh, maybe in one sitting or a few sittings or whatever. It's, it's a lot better that way. That's kind of the central theme. So, Whole Cake Island, it has its pros. It has its cons. Um, I think most people can agree. Um, I, it's not a lot of people's favorites. It's not a lot of people's least favorites as well. I, I think there's a lot worse One Piece arcs out there. Um, but regardless, I think we can kind of end this debate. Yeah. You want to do the closing? Yeah, I agree. Bits? So, <laughs> obviously, if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Mr. Ninja Star channel will, of course, be linked in the description. So, go check that out. Subscribe for more videos like this. And have a great day. Peace.